President Trump has been in office for nearly two and a half years, and his administration has seen unprecedented turnover uh, inside his cabinet. Labor Secretary Alex Acosta is just the latest cabinet member to quit after coming under fire for a plea deal he made a decade ago with accused sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein when Acosta was a, a U.S. attorney. Now, let's go ahead and take a look. I want to walk you through the magical mystery tour that is President Trump's cabinet. Here's the 15 cabinet-level agencies that you're looking at, and here is where President Trump started. You see a lot of familiar faces there, some faces uh, that are no longer there. You want me to demonstrate that? And I think this is important because you don't necessarily grasp how much the turnover has been until you like take a look at this original group and where we are now. Watch as it go through. You'll see some faces changed. DHS has changed over. You'll also see three departments right now that don't currently have a face. That's because they have acting officials that are currently running them. You'll see that the turnover has not only unsettled necessarily the agencies themselves, but also the administration as a whole. You want to know why the turnover actually occurred? This is probably the more problematic issue, and that's not coming from Democrats. This is when I talk to Republicans on Capitol Hill. It's the fact that a number of these departures were because individuals were forced out, because they faced scandal or perceived scandal scandal because they resigned, at least based on the resignation letter in the case of Jim Mattis, the former defense secretary, out of protest. There were two that left amicably. Congratulations, Ambassador Nikki Haley and Business Administrator Linda McMahon. Now, what are the total numbers here if you want a comparison of things? More cabinet level turnover at this stage in Trump's uh, term than any other of his predecessors going back to Ronald Reagan over the course of their first full years, with nine leaving. At this point in time, President Obama had lost one cabinet official two and a half years in. So it gives you kind of a sense of how quickly this is all turned over. That said, though a lot of people have left scandal, departures have been problematic, the president has been pushing people out, at least in Alex Acosta's case, maybe that wasn't the case. He's done a fantastic job. He's a friend of everybody in the administration. This is a person that I've gotten to know. There hasn't been an ounce of controversy at the Department of Labor until this came up. And he's doing this not for himself. He's doing this for the administration. And Alex, I think you'll agree. I said, you don't have to do this. He doesn't have to do this. I think by all accounts, it was an accurate representation of what happened. But it's not just cabinet. I, also, I want to bring up a graphic of the White House, too. And Bender, this is where you live most days. Of all the departures that they've had, five communications directors, three chiefs of staff, three national security advisors, three press secretaries, though they don't have briefings anymore, so I'm not sure that matters, three ledger affairs directors. Bender, brass tacks here. Mm -hmm. How much does this actually matter on the day-to-day -day operations of the White House and the administration? It matters hugely, and two quick points on this. One is to bring it back to Lisa's accomplishments. It's hard to get anything done when you have uh, this kind of turnover at inside the executive office and at a cabinet level. Uh, and then, and two is, is this is one thing that um, not only sort of general Americans, middle of the road Americans, but also Trump's base um, is turned off by. When there's a sense of chaos inside the White House, when not, not his Twitter personality, which, which, which a lot of people kind of put up with, but uh, the sense of turnover, the sense of things that aren't moving uh, smoothly, people get turned off, and that's where you see uh, Trump's numbers dip. And I, I want to, there's the, the real world implications of this. Take a look at what's going on at the Pentagon and the Department of Homeland Security, where you have office after office after office filled by active people, filled by people who aren't confirmed. So, Min, you're on the Hill. You talk to the Republicans who, I, I, at least I've heard, are, are unsettled by this. Why? They are, because it, first of all, it really diminishes their own role of advice and consent. I mean, there's, the president nominates, the Senate confirms, that's just how the process works. But in a lot of these key important positions, you want, especially dealing with national security and foreign policy, you want to send a message out to the world that not only does the president approve this someone, but a majority or a far majority of the Senate. And when you're an acting official, you don't send that message um, writ large. Yeah, Jeff, we got about 20 seconds left. What's your, your kind of read on things? The right? big thing is the defense secretary. The country can get along without um, a permanent uh, labor secretary, but the fact that there are still acting uh, secretaries in these very key positions, it's a very unstable view um, internally and how the world is looking here at this government. It is a, um, it's probably one of the biggest stories of this administration, the fact that there are so many acting, shifting musical chairs. Yeah. Um, one quick thing, the insults as to former cabinet officials that often come up as to why they might be gone. Tillerson, he was dumb as a rock. I couldn't get rid of him fast enough. Mattis, what's he done for me? He, how had he done in Afghanistan? Not good. McGahn, never a big fan. Bannon, sloppy Steve has been dumped like a dog. <laughs> it's not easy to leave this place <laughs> on good terms. So Alex Acosta, I guess uh, you, you at least get a win on that one.